have uh, just a couple of simple things that I just want to get across today, and just to reiterate on some of the points brought up by the other, other speakers earlier, earlier on, on evidence-based harm reduction. And the impo what I want to focus on is the importance of eco an economic way of thinking. And despite the many jokes about the dismal science and how economists are very good at knowing uh, what, on what is going on in imaginary worlds, um, they are still the people that understand choice. And because, because of that understanding, it, leads, it ends up leading us to a lot of interesting and, in, and, in, and I believe insightful, um, insight, insightful information regarding uh, as in the uh, situation in the downtown east side. For one, one of the things that people argue is that we, want it, we need to increase police. We have a lot of illegal behavior going on in the downtown east side. We need more police down there. Well, when you end up having something like drug addiction, when you're dealing with cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, uh, the demand for these drugs is what is called inelastic. And this, it's, uh, they treat their addiction much like, a, uh, much like a diabetic treats insulin, is they need a certain amount of this product every single day. So it doesn't matter how much cost it is. If you end up increasing the price of the product, they're going to have to commit more crime to end up getting their drugs. So if you end up increasing police, and I'm not saying increasing police is a bad thing, uh, but you have to be aware of this consequence, is that when we end up increasing police, you end up increasing the cost of providing illegal drugs, which can end up increasing the, pr the, uh, the profits for, for um, getting these drugs on the street. And so you're not going to end up dissuading many people, uh, whether you want to consider them organized crime or street-level dealers, the profits are going to be there still, it in, uh, or they're going to be greater in spite of the increased police presence. And the second thing that it can, um, ec ec economic analysis, analysis can end up doing is allow you to get, end up getting answers to questions. And part of this is, I believe, important for harm reduction in the context of insight. And with a colleague of mine, Neil Boyd, whom most of you have seen on the news on every other, every other evening, um, we ended up analyzing just, just concerning with HIV. There are a whole bunch of other positive uh, benefits that insight brings about through, um, you know, whether it's just fewer needles on the street. Uh, you know, millions of needles are no longer on the street and have to be picked up because the injections occur in Insight, and, um, and as, as well as other health-related related concerns with unsafe injections. And just based on a considering HIV alone, we found that Insight uh, saves our healthcare system approximately $5 million every year. It ends up costing about $1.5 million every year, so that's a return on the investment of about $3.5 for every dollar spent on Insight. And so by performing an economic analysis, considering the costs and the benefits of these types of things, what it allows us to do is say that, okay, well, we can put aside on whether the issue of whether or not it works. Insight works, and it's kind of a no-brainer. You know, you're providing clean needles to people who, end up, who have HIV and Hep C and et cetera. And by doing this, we can end up saying we can put the decision, decision based on ethics and politics and other, and, uh, and other issues and not have to worry about whether or not what we're doing is going to end up being a positive uh, for our healthcare system because um, ourselves and also some other people in Eastern Canada have shown that Insight ends up being a positive impact on, on, uh, on our healthcare system. That's it. I'm sure that's under my three minutes. <laughs>